All right, all you positive heads, welcome, welcome. Here we grow again. Grateful to be back with you as always, and I am extra excited today to announce that over the next seven episodes, the next seven Monday and Friday episodes, not Wednesday, the Soul Share uh, episode days, I'm going to be reading my book, The Golden Key, Modern Alchemy to Unlock Infinite Abundance. And for those of you who aren't aware of the book, it is my 25 years of deep exploration, everything we talk about on the show sort of condensed into you know, three, just over three hours to listen to a hundred pages to read. And my, you know, what I see as the the keys to alchemize and unlock infinite abundance in our life. And in an aim to, uh, in an effort to do that for myself, as I was, you know, setting out to, uh, here we are a fresh year. It's always an opportunity to reevaluate things. It's the beginning of 2022. And one of the things that occurred to me is, well, one, not only have I not read the golden key, on Positive Head yet, but I haven't actually, for those of you who have read it or will hear me reading it here in the coming episodes, uh, I haven't done the game fully. (laughs) Uh, Honest moment, uh, transparent moment, I haven't done the game with the universe, the ritual action plan at the end of the book. I mean, I've done all of the exercises many, many times, but I haven't done them consecutively for 88 days like I suggest doing at the end of the book. So, in an effort to be more mindful in the new year and, you know, walk the talk even more fully, I thought, you know what, now's the time. Let's read the book. Let's uh, invite the listeners uh, who haven't heard the book, of course, to hear it, and then join me in the Golden Game Keymasters private Facebook group. I'd like to invite everyone participating, listening to this audiobook to join for free. And then at the end of reading, completing the book, which I will synchronistically finish on January 28th, 2022, one year to the day since I released the book, which was uh, January 28th, 2021. So I want to invite everyone between now and then to join the Facebook group. And you can find the link uh, in these show notes and, and all the you know show notes for the, the upcoming uh, parts of the book w- over the seven episodes. And j- yeah, just join up and then I'll let everyone in on the 28th and then we can uh, proceed to uh, participate in these uh, this ritual action plan that I put together and hold each other accountable and, and you know, inspire each other and share our own uh, types of abundance that we're looking to call in and, you know, any sort of inspirational things that have happened. And, you know, as you'll see, the, the um, over the 88 days, the, the different techniques and things that I share in the book, they're pretty easy and it's, a, it's literally a few minutes commitment a day. But, you know, over that time period, 88 days is, is not a short time period. So I want to I want to do it together, invite you guys to let's all be a part of it and support one another. If you're hearing this and it's, you know, um, episode three or part three, you can always go back and listen. Uh, just you'll see I'll label them each each one, part one, part two, part three, you know, seven total. Or you can go to goldenkey.gift.gift, use the code positive head and get the audio and or ebook. Uh, for free there as well with that code. And then you can listen at your own pace. But uh, hope to have a lot of you join in the Facebook group and let's just like support each other in calling in the maximum amount of abundance, unlocking the infinite abundance. That is our birthright. I am infinite abundance. I am that which I seek. And so are you. Hope you guys enjoy part one of the golden key, modern alchemy to unlock infinite abundance. The golden key, modern alchemy to unlock infinite abundance. Written and narrated by Brandon Beecham. Acknowledgement. Special thanks to my partner in time, Karen, for helping to distill my infinite perspectives, as well as my two favorite artists, Vajra and Dalian, without any of whom this book would not have quite the same luster. Dedication. I would like to dedicate this book to all those who are ready to remember. Introduction. Nice to meet you again for the first time. Welcome to the Golden Key, Modern Alchemy to Unlock Infinite Abundance. First off, 
let me say congratulations. If you are reading these words, I would say that it is because you are ready to attract more abundance in all its many forms into your life. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here because expanded abundance is what this book represents energetically. And as we will explore within the following pages, we cannot attract anything into our lives that's not a vibrational match for where we are in our personal evolution. And let me be clear. Although adopting the perspectives I'm about to share will likely lead to an increased flow of monetary abundance in your life, that is just one reflection of our inherent abundant nature. You are quite likely to also experience increased abundance in health, abundance in relationships, abundance in time, abundance in peace, and in every other facet of your life imaginable. As you proceed, please know I'm not asking you to take my word on anything that I share in this book. All I ask is that you read these words with a curious, open mind and heart, and then be willing to experiment a bit by applying the perspectives that I share and let the results speak for themselves. Fair enough? I also invite you to pay close attention to how the words in this book resonate and feel to you energetically, as I believe we all have an internal compass that can help inform us as to the validity of information. In reality, I believe there's nothing I can tell you that your higher self or soul doesn't already know. I can only help you remember that which you have forgotten. So if you are willing to listen with an open heart and mind and humor me for a few hours of reading, buckle up your seatbelt because you are in for an incredible ride. I am going to share with you the eight keys to abundance, which includes the golden key, the master key that ultimately links them all together. I've personally uncovered these keys over 25 years of trial, error, and deep exploration. Synchronistically, I unintentionally landed on eight keys when writing this book. When I first shared this with my brother, he brought to my attention that eight is considered a financially fortuitous number in both traditional and modern Chinese culture because it sounds phonetically similar to the Chinese word which means to generate wealth. Based on the title, some of you may be expecting this book to share wealth generating techniques like trading stocks or how to manage your bank account. However, these eight keys are not about how you can hack the system or get rich quick by doing something external to yourself, such as put X percent of your paycheck in your savings account each month, or skip the Starbucks and invest that money in cryptocurrency, or save hundreds of dollars by switching to Geico. Although that all may be helpful advice, it can only take you so far. These eight essential keys are about unlocking the abundance that already resides within each of us, which those types of strategies completely overlook. As you ultimately find, unlocking these foundational truths is the path to infinite abundance in all its many forms, because going beyond the surface to the deeper core of our being allows us to access the profound wisdom that will be crucial to create lasting success in the new world that is rapidly emerging. This text will guide you through eight key shifts in perspective that once used to unlock your life, can't help but attract more abundance as a natural byproduct. As the great teacher and philosopher Dr. Wayne Dyer once said, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. In addition to reading this book, I am also inviting you to play a unique abundance manifestation game outlined in detail at goldenkey.gift and at the end of this book. This game will give you an opportunity to demonstrate to the universe that you are ready to generate more golden experiences in your life and begin your journey toward unlocking infinite abundance. To give you a quick overview, if you opt to experiment and play the game, you will choose to make a monetary contribution based on the amount of abundance you wish to cultivate in your life and the personal value you place on this book. And then you're going to set the intention to use your currency contribution as a symbolic marker of how much more abundance you want to flow back into your world. You will also perform simple yet powerful exercises to help you catalyze real, tangible results. 
As you and the other readers play this game, magical stories of synchronicity and abundance will inevitably unfold. At goldenkey.gift, you will also have the opportunity to share your results as well as see the inspiring results of others. Also, as we will discuss in the coming pages, I firmly believe letting your monetary currency flow when it is aligned with something with positive and pure intentions that also resonates with you personally is one of the key ways we accelerate more financial abundance flowing back into our lives. Which is why if you opt to play, I am going to practice what I preach by sharing 50% of the proceeds with you from anyone that you share your personal free book download code with that decides to participate in our Abundance Manifestation game as well. Further details at goldenkey.gift. The game is designed to help anchor into your conscious and subconscious minds proof that the claims made in this book are in fact real, and to powerfully demonstrate to you your own unlimited ability to call in any and all of the various forms of abundance that you set the intention to manifest. Ultimately, this game is designed to be your personal proof of concept so that after playing, you feel confident to continue to strengthen and flex your abundance manifestation muscles for the rest of your life. Information and concepts are great, but equally important is knowing how to apply that knowledge by taking action, which then leads to tangible results, something I've been fairly adept at doing in my own life. Speaking of being adept at achieving results, let me give you a little background on me and my personal journey with manifesting abundance. My name is Brandon Beecham, and I am a truth seeker and philosopher. I have also been a serial entrepreneur since childhood, and in 2011, I co-founded a company that is present-day ResortShare. In August of 2015, ResortShare was named the 569th fastest growing private company in America in the annual Inc. 5000 fastest growing companies list. That same year, I exited ResortShare and began focusing on my greatest passion, exploring conversations about consciousness and what I refer to as the ultimate nature of reality on the Positive Head podcast. I am grateful to say that Positive Head has been consistently rated in the top five in the spirituality category on iTunes, Apple Podcasts for several years, and has amassed over 14 million downloads as of the time I am writing this. I am also currently stewarding Positive Head's evolution on the new, late-night style, consciousness-centric variety talk show, Optimistic. And The Golden Key is my first book. So how did I accomplish all of these things? How did I defy the odds and lead my company to achieve what one in 10,000 entrepreneurs is able to achieve, launching a company with only a few hundred dollars in my pocket and ultimately growing it to exceed 10 million in annual revenue without ever raising any startup capital? How did I create a top-rated podcast in a sea of other incredible podcasters with no prior broadcasting experience and virtually no marketing? How have I achieved uncanny health, which is arguably the ultimate wealth? How have I, at the age of 46 years young, enjoyed highly fulfilling relationships and managed to truly have more fun with each passing year? I firmly believe I have accomplished all of this by coming to understand the ultimate nature of reality, by learning the fundamental nature of the situation in which I find myself as a human being. The good news is, You too can achieve all of this and more as you will come to realize while reading this book. I am not any more special than you. I have just come to understand the essential rules of the game of life, so to speak. And one of the reasons I want to share these keys with you freely is that I know that if you win, I win. That a rising tide raises all ships. I call it the good kind of selfish, which I'll explain the importance of in the coming pages. So then the question becomes, are you ready to experience the greatest and grandest version of yourself and unlock infinite abundance? If you currently are not living your highest potential, what is holding you back? Many people will tell you a lack of time and money are two of the main reasons they aren't living their best lives. Time is undoubtedly the greatest resource. 
Unfortunately, at our current stage of evolution, most humans trade a huge percentage of this priceless commodity for money, or rather symbols that represent wealth and yet have no inherent value themselves. But at its core, money truly is just energy. Everything is energy for that matter, and that is not just a philosophical or spiritual concept. Science has proven that all matter, and non-matter for that matter, is energy. And this book is going to show you how to transmute and alchemize all the future energies you will experience, as well as past experiences that have impacted your life. According to Oxford Languages, alchemy is the medieval forerunner of chemistry based on the supposed transformation of matter. Alchemy is most notably known as an ancient, arcane process for combining and magically transmuting lesser metals into gold. The eight keys shared within these pages will provide you with eight expanded perspectives regarding the ultimate nature of reality that will empower you to unlock infinite abundance. If you apply the insights I am about to share as your new core operating system, this will undoubtedly lead you to a place where you can truly alchemize and transmute all of the pain and hardships you have experienced into something as radiant and powerful as gold. That being said, if you truly want to hit the game of life jackpot, you have to understand the fundamental rules and nature of the game in which you find yourself. Unfortunately, None of us were born with a user's manual, and most of us were handed well-intended yet outdated ideas from those who came before us that have often gotten questionable results. So, what are the core truths underlying the human experience in which we all find ourselves immersed in here on planet Earth? What is the ultimate nature of reality? What are the keys to utilize if we wish to begin practicing modern alchemy? The first key, see the oneness. Quantum theory thus reveals a basic oneness of the universe. Erwin Schrodinger, Nobel Prize winning physicist. As we begin on this journey, some of the things we consider, imply, and explore may be difficult to believe at first. Perhaps they will feel too grandiose or impossible. But if you notice, even the word impossible itself breaks down to I'm possible. And if you're reading this book, you have most likely at least heard the concept that all is one, which is one of those grandiose concepts that can seem hard to fathom or wrap our brains around. That being said, I believe wholeheartedly that oneness is the underlying truth of existence, and an ever-growing number of people also appear to be subscribing to the same view of reality. More and more people are convinced that humanity is going through a massive evolution, and as we continue to evolve, I believe the old ways of operating from a mentality of separation will no longer lead to wealth and power the way they once did. I believe that generally speaking, within the span of recorded human history, we have been in a cycle designed so that humanity could experience the fullness of separation, the me against the world, or caterpillar stage of our evolution, as I like to say. In this stage, history shows us that there have been countless instances where people were completely self-serving and actually achieved material abundance in the process. However, I believe humanity is now entering a new phase of evolution, the butterfly stage, where instead of being separation-centric and dominated by ideologies like me against the world, the focus is on coming together to collaborate so that we can create a new world where there is enough abundance for every human being to not only survive, but thrive. I believe we have entered the prime time in our collective evolution for humanity to remember and come together to create from the powerful truth of our existence that is rooted in oneness. The Butterfly Effect I like to say that humanity is metaphorically moving into its butterfly stage as we slowly come back together into a state of beautiful cooperation and unity. Currently, as I write this book in late 2020, 
COVID-19 has demanded that the whole world cocoon itself and take a sacred pause for the first time in recent history, and it has inadvertently forced us to step back and take a long, hard look at the state of the world and much of the injustice we have traditionally accepted or just turned a blind eye to. We're starting to see an ever-increasing number of outdated structures and modalities that no longer serve us crumble. I believe 2020 will be looked back on as the year humankind moved into its COVID chrysalis. If you look closely at the journey of the breathtaking butterfly, it starts out as a funky little caterpillar that basically eats everything in its path with reckless abandon oftentimes severely damaging plants and trees in the process. This is very similar to humankind's evolutionary journey throughout recorded history, doing unnecessary harm to Mother Earth, our fellow animals, and even purposely harming each other due to our narrow-sighted, separation-based perspectives and self-serving agendas. However, at a crucial point in the caterpillar's evolutionary journey, when it has done all the consuming and destroying it is divinely designed to do, suddenly new cells called imaginelle cells begin popping up within the caterpillar. The imaginelle cells contain the template for the butterfly that will be born. At first, the caterpillar cells view these imaginelle cells as foreign invaders and quickly identify and destroy them. But over time, more and more imaginelle cells begin to appear on the scene. They start working together until eventually the tide turns within the caterpillar and the imaginelle cells are the new dominant force that takes control. At this point, the caterpillar cells begin breaking down and the caterpillar enters into its pupa stage where it goes into a protective chrysalis so its full metamorphosis into the butterfly can begin. The caterpillar cells and all of the destruction that they precipitated now disintegrate into a goo that acts as fuel for the imaginelle cells to feed on. In the end, the destruction that the caterpillar inflicted was necessary so that the imaginelle cells could have the required fuel to transform into a butterfly. As opposed to the destructive regime of the caterpillar, the butterfly has an agenda that is symbiotic with nature carrying pollen from plant to plant, helping flowers, vegetables, and fruits to produce new seeds. Sound like the journey of any other species you know? This is a perfect metaphor for the evolution of humankind. If we view the human race as one large organism, each individual can be seen as a cell within the larger being that is Mother Earth. In the past, when the imaginelle cells of the human organism would pop up speaking out about unity, unconditional love, and oneness, they would quickly be silenced, ridiculed, or in many cases even killed. However, just like in the caterpillar, the tide eventually turns. Today, more and more imaginelle cell-like humans are working together to begin the great shift into a new era for humanity. Of course, it can look messy at this stage of humanity's evolution, just like it does for the caterpillar. But fear not. Just when the caterpillar thinks its world is ending, it becomes a butterfly. You're a star, baby. If you wish to attract more abundance into your reality during this new era that is dawning on our planet, it's important to understand why operating from a perspective of oneness is the most foundational key to implement. So we're going to get a little geeky and start by looking at some of the ever-growing scientific evidence that points to this ultimate truth. The first stellar thing to understand when you're exploring this concept of oneness is to understand humankind's origin story. We think of our bodies as beginning at conception within our mother's womb and slowly inching closer to death with each passing day. This is a relative truth, but really, we need to expand our perspective and look back to the womb of all creation itself to get a glimpse of our true nature. The truth is, you're a star baby, baby. When acclaimed astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson was asked by a reader of Time magazine, what is the most astounding fact you can share with us about the universe? He replied, 
The most astounding fact is the knowledge that the atoms that comprise life on Earth, the atoms that make up the human body, are traceable to the crucibles that cooked light elements into heavy elements in their core under extreme temperatures and pressures. These stars, the high-mass ones among them, went unstable in their later years. They collapsed and then exploded, scattering their enriched guts across the galaxy. Guts made of carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and all the fundamental ingredients of life itself. These ingredients become part of gas clouds that condense, collapse, form the next generation of solar systems, stars with orbiting planets, and those planets now have the ingredients for life itself. So that when I look up at the night sky, and I know that, yes, we're part of this universe, we are in this universe, but perhaps more important than both of those facts is that the universe is in us. My atoms came from those stars. So from a physical perspective, the building blocks of the universe are continually recycled. We are literally all composed of atoms that once were part of stars that lived out their entire life cycle for billions of years in radiance, from infancy to adolescence to adulthood, old age, and then ultimately died via a dramatic explosion, supernova. After they finally died, their atomic remains spread out across the universe. At some point, they reformed into planet Earth, and eventually you. I personally find it immensely empowering knowing that the history of my physical being is rooted in the heart of a star. Whenever I doubt myself and my potential to be the person I want to be, to attract abundance into my life that seems near impossible by most standards, I think about the profound implications of my origins and our collective potential. Our human doubts seem laughable next to the sheer improbability and complexity that all life, including us humans, formed from the cradle of the cosmos. When you feel small and your goals feel so far from reach, remember what you truly are. If you have ever wondered if you too could be a star, well, wonder no more. You are made of stars. It's all space. The next big misconception that I would like to discuss is the supposed solidity of the physical matter that comprises the universe. Matter is not actually the rigid, dense material that it appears to be. Atoms, which are famously known as the foundational building blocks of all physical structures throughout the known universe, are actually about 99.99999% space. If you remove the empty space from the atoms of all people, the entire human race could fit in the volume of a sugar cube. This puts a whole new twist on that 80s song, Pour Some Sugar On Me, eh? And the particles that do make up this so-called matter are not actually solid at all. They are vibrating light waves of energy that are ceaselessly popping in and out of existence at an extremely rapid rate. The truth is, we have no idea where they go when they disappear, or where they come from when they reappear, but we know just enough to see that they are intelligent and highly organized whenever they show up in our universe. So as it turns out, reality works much like a film and a movie projector, because these light particles flash in and out of existence so quickly, our eyes can't perceive their inconsistent attributes. These patterns of light particles flicker so rapidly that they give the illusion of looking and feeling solid. But the truth of the matter is that there really is no solid matter. And since you are made up of this ethereal matter, you are also nothing more and nothing less than highly organized and intelligent vibrations of light energy that the universe is projecting onto the screen of your life. The star of your own movie. Let's get spooky. When you look at what quantum physics has to say about all of this, it really starts to get strange. As famed quantum physicist Niels Bohr once stated, if quantum mechanics hasn't profoundly shocked you, you haven't understood it yet. The phenomenon called quantum entanglement, or 
spooky action at a distance, as described by Albert Einstein, further demonstrates the connectedness of the universe. When you bring together two photons, they become entangled. Then, when the two photons are separated and you change the state of one of them, the other photon instantly reacts and changes also. And when I say instantly, I mean faster than the speed of light. Scientists have successfully transmitted entangled photons between a satellite and Earth at a distance of over 750 miles. Put one photon in outer space, do something to the entangled photon on planet Earth, and the one in space will instantly react. So if you've ever wondered why you can sense when something is wrong with a loved one, it's because we're closely entangled with the people that we love. Quantum physicist Nassim Haramein also points out a very interesting signature from the architect of the cosmos that strongly implies oneness, and that the macrocosm is merely an extension of the microcosm and vice versa. He explains that we now realize empty space is not so empty, that the vacuum of space itself contains energy. If we look at the nucleus of an atom to observe how much of it is empty space, we find that 10 to the 55th grams of vacuum energy is present in a proton. Well, it just so happens that 10 to the 55th grams is also the mass of the universe. So essentially, there is the mass of the universe present in the volume of a proton, which is a very, very small entity. Nassim went on to say that this confirms something fundamental to him. It confirms that the vacuum is truly the thing that connects all things. It showed that everything is entangled and that everything is one. So if matter isn't truly solid and everything is connected, what is going on behind the curtain of creation? Max Planck, another Nobel Prize winning scientist and founder of quantum theory, said, all matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force. We must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. So what is this intelligent mind? What is this force? Consciousness. The Maharishi Effect. Have you ever thought of a new idea and then all of a sudden someone invents it? At first pondering this, it might appear to be nothing more than a well-timed coincidence. But upon further inspection, there's more and more evidence that points to the reality that there's something more to this. A collective field of consciousness that connects us all. In 1960, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi predicted that 1% of a population practicing meditation would produce measurable improvements in the quality of life for the whole population. One notable instance where this phenomenon was demonstrated and documented was over a seven-week period in Washington, D.C. in the summer of 1993. A group of meditators set out that summer with the intention of reducing crime in the U.S. Capitol. The experiment started with 800 meditators and over the seven-week time period grew to 4,000 participants. Before they began, the researchers publicly announced that they expected to have a 20% success rate in reducing crime in Washington that summer. They had the confidence to announce this prediction up front because they had conducted the same kind of experiment previously and had achieved a 20% reduction in crime at that time. Since summer is traditionally the highest crime rate season of the year in D.C., this prediction seemed absurd. Not to mention, violent crimes had already been on the rise during the first half of the year leading up to the experiment. At the onset, the chief of police even chimed in by stating that 20 inches of snow would be the only thing that could possibly decrease crime by 20% in Washington, D.C. that coming summer. However, once the experiment started and as the meditation group grew, the drop in crime followed suit just as was predicted, dropping proportionally with each passing week as the number of meditators increased. Ultimately, the largest reduction occurred near the end of the experiment, peaking at 23.3% when the group of meditators was at its largest. The statistical probability that these incredible results would occur by natural variation or chance is less than 2 in 1 billion. All is one. 
act accordingly. So now that you can see a few examples that we are made from the same stuff physically, and also that all life is composed of one interconnected field of consciousness, it's easier for you to start to see the oneness and also begin to understand why it is such a foundational and fundamental key to unlocking abundance. It essentially means that at some level, all of the abundance we see in the world is an extension of ourselves, the opposite of our usual narrative that we are separate from the abundance we seek. So once we accept this, the question then becomes, how do we access more of the abundance that is essentially our birthright, which up until now has been lying just out of reach? A perspective shift is key. Implement the mantra, all is one, act accordingly as a foundational truth in your heart and mind to begin to shift your perspective to always and always see the oneness. This is why you'll notice I sometimes use the word understand, because it implies a deeper understanding, one that comes from the heart, a deep knowing, unobstructed by the human ego, arising from unconditional acceptance that all is one. As a whole, this is going to require you to tap into your childlike wonder, curiosity, and wits to get your hands into the proverbial cookie jar high up in the pantry instead of gazing up at it, salivating from far below. And for that to happen, it is going to be helpful to not only understand how to reach the container, but also to understand how to unlock and gain access to the infinite treats inside. Well, if nothing is solid and everything is simply vibrations of connected energy, could the cookie jar be just like the spoon in the famous scene from the movie The Matrix? In this scene, Neo, also known as The One, is trying to bend the spoon with his mind unsuccessfully, and the young boy who is doing it effortlessly looks at him and says, Do not try and bend the spoon. That's impossible. Instead, only try to realize the truth. There is no spoon. Then you'll see that it is not the spoon that bends, it is only yourself. So then in fact, you won't need a tall stool or ladder to reach the cookie jar. Instead, accessing it will require a shift in perspective. That there is no cookie jar, and you've actually had access to the infinite treats all along. To summarize, our first foundational key on this journey is to see reality as an extension of self. To no longer see it as a series of separate people, events, and resources, but rather to unlock the knowing that everything is interconnected. When you start to alchemize the old story of separation and remember to see the oneness, a natural impulse arises to do all you can to facilitate coming back together with the other yous slash members to help them re-member as well. You will also inevitably come to the realization that there is no separation between you and the abundance you desire. It has simply been lying dormant deep within the cells of your being, waiting for you to stir from your slumber. All right, everyone, that concludes today's reading from The Golden Key, Modern Alchemy to Unlock Infinite Abundance. Hope you have enjoyed. Be sure and go to the link in the show notes to join uh, the Facebook, the private Facebook group, The Golden Game Key Masters, where we'll be participating in some abundance manifestation exercises collectively and supporting one another on that journey. And also remember, you can get the book, your own copy of the audio or ebook at goldenkey.gift using the code positive head. Uh, you'll get the audio or ebook uh, for free. Otherwise, until next time, journey well. Love you so, so much.